Good morning um, welcome to Shipley Baptist Church, those online and those here in person. Um, just before we, we kind of continue our worship together, um, I haven't had anyone rush up to me to s- ask me about notices and things like that, so I'm assuming there aren't any, but this is your opportunity to wave at me if there is something that you need to tell me about. No one's waving, so that's good. Everything is probably as standard and usual the course of this next week then. Um, so, let's just um, come together and just invite God to be with us um, as we spend time together and spend time with God. Let's um, just some words as we start, um, inspired by um, our reading that comes to us later this morning. Stay with us, Lord, for the day is far spent, and yet we have not yet recognized your face in each of our brothers and sisters. Stay with us, Lord, for the day is far spent, and we have not yet shared your bread and grace with our brothers and sisters. Stay with us, Lord, for the day is far spent, And we have not yet listened to your word in the words of our brothers and sisters. Stay with us, Lord, because our very night becomes day when you are there. As we worship together, let's um, not just be on our own with God, um, though that's okay. But actually, let's recognize that we're here together um, as part of a community together. Um, with the image of God dwelling in each one of us, and not just those of us here in this room, but those of us in the whole world. And um, let's seek um, God's image in each other as we worship too.
Holy, 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 I want to see. Holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see. Holy, 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 holy, holy
So um, in a couple of moments, our children and young people will um, go on to the, the various activities that they're doing. Um, but before they do that, um, I'd like to kind of do a couple of quick prayers um, for them, for those that go with them, but also for Jeff, um, who'll be speaking for us um, a little bit um, later on. So let's just pray. Spirit of God, we thank you for the privilege of being able to be together um, across um, ages, um, across culture, um, all sorts of different backgrounds, um, different life experiences that we're here um, and we're able to be together, created in your image, to worship you and hear more and learn more about who you are. And we pray for our children and young people as they leave um, the top bit of this worship, but continue in their groups um, to find out more about you. And those that go with them, just ask that your spirit rests on them um, and that they have a sense of who you are, but probably as much as importantly, that they have a sense of fun and um, great relationship together too. And we pray for Jeff um, as he speaks um, later on. And may our ears be ready to hear what you have to say to us through Jeff um, and may your spirit rest on Jeff and give him the the words and your inspiration so that he might um, truly kind of bring some news to us of what it is that you want us to hear in your name amen so um, children young people um, those going with them um, now is the time to wander downstairs, and we'll see you over tea and coffee later. Um, and then um, once they've moved, Barb will come and read, but you can give them a minute or two to move. Bible reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, and I'm starting to read at verse 13, and I think it will sound familiar to you. So Luke 24, verse 13. That same day, and, and the day that it refers to is the day when the women went to the tomb, went to Jesus' tomb, and found the stone rolled away and nobody there. That same day, two of them were walking to the village Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, what's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, long-faced, like they'd lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what happened during the last few days? He said, What has happened? They said, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene. He was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word blessed by both God and all the people. But then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it's now the third day since it happened. But now some of the women, some of our women, have completely confused us. Early this morning they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty, just as the women said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then he said to them, 
so thick-headed, so slow-hearted. Why can't you simply believe all that the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed, and he acted as if he were going on, but they pressed him, stay, have supper with us. It's nearly evening, the day is done. So he went in with them, and here's what happened. He sat down at the table with them. Taking the bread, he blessed and broke and gave it to them. At that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognised him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scriptures for us? This is God's word. Those two disciples on on the road to Emmaus, why didn't they recognise the risen Jesus? When he came up to them, why didn't they know it was him? When he just came up to them, he walked alongside them. He was right there in front of their eyes. But they didn't know it was him. Well, I think there's a bit of a mystery here and we'll, I suppose we'll never really get the whole answer to it I think some of it has to do with the fact that Jesus somehow looked different you know that resurrection body he had his appearance had changed somehow he was the same as the Jesus they'd known before he died but he was different as well but I think the main reason that they weren't didn't recognize him was that they simply weren't expecting to see him and they had the best possible reason for not expecting to see him. They'd been in Jerusalem. They'd witnessed everything that had happened in the last week, how Jesus had been arrested and tried and crucified and buried. So although there he was right in front of them, they didn't see him because seeing him was the very last thing they expected to happen. Because they knew for a fact that he was dead and buried. I think that's why they didn't recognise him. And sometimes <clears throat> I don't see what's right in front of my eyes when I'm not expecting to see it. <clears throat> um, you probably have done this as well. You've been looking for something <clears throat> and you can't see it, even though it's right in front of you, <clears throat> you know, because it's not where you're expecting it to be and it's there <clears throat> you don't see it. <clears throat> I'm very good at not seeing things that are right in front of my eyes. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm not expecting to see them, that is. Although that's not perhaps quite true, always. Uh, I, I mean, s- sometimes I don't see when Rachel's wearing something new and I wasn't expecting her to be wearing something new. <clears throat> but truth is that I also sometimes don't notice it when I've actually been with her when she's been to the shop and bought it. So that doesn't quite follow through uh, and the same thing happens of course when she's had a, a haircut as well sometimes uh, even sometimes when she's had what you might call a fairly drastic cut uh, I fail to notice it I think the most memorable occasion uh, though really was the time when I <coughs> went away for the weekend on a, a men's weekend and I came back home and we were sitting in the lounge chatting I was catching up on, with her on what had happened over the weekend. And um, I think we only had, I think that was before Ruth was born, I think we had two, Ben and Sam would be sitting there and uh, great to see them again. And um, uh, I failed to notice that while I'd been away, Rachel redecorated the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, it, it was all there before my eyes. The new paint, the new wallpaper was there before my eyes. I didn't notice it. Uh, yes, yeah, she spent the whole weekend doing it. 
just because you can, just because something's there to be seen, doesn't necessarily mean that you can see it. Now, we want people to see Jesus. That's what we're all about. We want people to see Jesus. We want people to see Jesus all across our nation. We want people to see Jesus in the town where we live. We want people to see Jesus in the communities where we ourselves spend our time. And there's only one way that they're going to see him. And that is they're going to see him in us. There are some famous words from St. Teresa of Avila. Uh, and these are the words. Uh, Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. Yours are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. People see Jesus in us. Now, I wasn't expecting to see that new outfit that Rachel was wearing. I wasn't expecting to see that new hairdo that I failed to notice. I wasn't expecting to see that newly decorated lounge that I failed, that I failed to notice. But I did see them when they were pointed out to me. And I saw them because... They really were there to be seen. I'm sure G people aren't expecting to see Jesus when they meet me. That's not how people are. That's not how people see Christians as people that, in whom they're expecting to see our Saviour. But the question is, is he there to be seen? Well, I can confidently say that the answer to that is yes, Jesus is there to be seen. I know that because when I was 17, I invited Christ to come into my life. And when you invite him to come into your life, he comes. If you haven't invited Christ into your life, you need to do that. Even though people are not expecting to see him, Jesus is alive in me. That's a fact, but that's not good enough. It needs to be seen in me as well. For that to happen, I've got to act like Jesus. In any given situation, I've got to do what Jesus would do. Those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, Jesus talked to them a lot. He was good at talking. He did talk a lot all the time when he was alive and after he was raised from the dead. He talked a lot and he knew what he was talking about. And we just heard there that he started at the beginning of the scriptures with the book of Moses and went through all the prophets pointing out everything the scriptures in the scriptures that referred to him. And that must have been quite a Bible study. Jesus talked to the disciples. He talked about himself. But they didn't recognise him while he was talking about himself. They recognised him when he did something. When he broke the bread. Now, I like talking about Jesus. I do quite a bit of it. I'm doing it right now. But no one's going to see Jesus in me if all I do is talk about him. To see Jesus in me, they need, they need to follow me around for a week and see how I live my life in the world. Now, you may find it easy to talk about Jesus, or you may find it really hard. That actually isn't important. But what is important is that you act like Jesus. Uh, there's a famous quote which is attributed to St Francis of Assisi. 
uh, which goes, preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. It was when Jesus did something that the two disciples recognised him. When he broke the bread. There are wristbands you can buy with the letters WWJD on them. They became very popular, I think, back in the 1990s. WWJD stands for What Would Jesus Do? And some Christians find it helpful to have a, a wristband as a sort of a visual reminder there. They can keep looking at it and thinking, yep, yeah. in different situations, what would Jesus do? You don't have to wear the wristband. But my message this morning is, you really do have to do what Jesus would do. Otherwise, no one will see him. All those people who weren't expecting to see Jesus in the first place aren't expecting to see Jesus in the first place. Never will see him. And every day we do have opportunities to act like Jesus. Uh, to do what Jesus would do. Maybe giving someone who's struggling a bit of encouragement. Maybe giving someone a call to see how they're doing. Maybe giving someone a helping hand in some way. Uh, maybe being a, being a listening ear for someone, perhaps. Maybe we could take up a volunteering role of some kind. Maybe we just, perhaps we could uh, get alongside someone who's lonely. Perhaps we could help out someone who's struggling to make ends meet with a little bit of help. The opportunities are endless. And essentially here, I think I'm talking about doing acts of kindness. Now, anyone can be kind. And thankfully, the world is full of kind people. Some of them are people of faith. Most of them are probably people who don't have faith. But I think there's an important difference when it comes to Showing kindness for those of us who have Christ living in us. For those who have, who have the spirit of Christ in us. That's when we're in a situation where we find it really hard to be kind. That's when we know the difference of having Christ living in us. It's when perhaps we have the opportunity to be kind to someone we don't want to be kind to. Maybe someone who isn't very likeable. Maybe someone who, who, who is actually our enemy. Or maybe we think someone who we think doesn't really deserve to have kindness shown to them. It's at that point that we find we have a supernatural help from Christ living in us. Uh, when those two disciples on the road to Emmaus recognised Jesus as he broke the bread, they would have seen the nail prints in his hands. We know they were there because uh, Jesus showed them to Thomas, the disciple who didn't believe his body, in his bodily resurrection. And on the cross, with the nails in his hands, Jesus was showing kindness to the unlovely people. Kindness to his enemies. And kindness to those who weren't deserving of kindness. And that includes us all. Let's just say, say a prayer to close. Lord Jesus, I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to go your way. I give you my eyes to see as you do. I give you my tongue to speak your words. I give you my mind that you may think in me. I give you my spirit that you may pray in me. 
Above all, I give you my heart that you may love in me. Amen. As we sing um, together, you should use this space to just reflect a little bit on what Jeff said and um, just have a little bit think about how you can invite, yeah, Jesus to kind of reflect himself in you further. <laughs> Let's continue praying. Um, this morning as we, we pray, I'm, I'm going to invite you to, to use your bodies 
um, as part of the way that we pray. Um, and with just some simple British sign language. Um, I'm hopefully I've got these right. If you know British sign language better than I do and I've got things wrong, just tell me afterwards. Um, but there, there are four things I want you to learn. The first is world. World. The second is peace. The third is heal or health. So it's kind of like almost a mashed potato type thing. Although you probably didn't do that. I just did that out of uh, just so many years of dancing. So it's probably just one of them, actually. <laughs> and um, the other is equality or, or kind of justice. I couldn't find a justice one, but equality is... Okay. So in a, in a little while, I'll invite you to use those, those signs as a way of praying. But, but first... Um, Let's, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that on our earthly journey, you walk quietly and lovingly beside us to listen, to comfort, to guide and encourage. Lord, we often fail to recognize you, but you are here. You're here in the face and hands of those walking beside us. You are here in the fall of sunlight and the soft notes of music. You are here in the comfort that we will hear from your word. You are here in the bread and wine which will become for us your body and your blood. And you are here by your Holy Spirit, living and dwelling inside us as you promised to be. Lord, like those disciples on that Emmaus road, we are often sad, bewildered, confused, tired. And we invite you to come, come again, and speak words that burn within our hearts. We invite you to stand among us in your risen power. And Lord, we know that the world is not as you would want it to be. And so, as we pray for our world, we bring to mind those this weekend who are in London, trying to influence decision makers to act quickly on the climate crisis. We know that the world has done so much to damage the earth that we as humans have done that and much change needs to happen. And whilst there are positive roots of change, small growth of um, yeah, new hope, we know that it's not quick enough. So we pray for our world that you might restore it and you might move those in our world who have the power to change things to act and act quickly. And so we sign world. And Lord, we know that in our world, conflict um, it's ever present. That despite each one of us being created in your image, humans use power and conflict to damage and mar that image in each other. This morning, we pray for all parts of the world where conflict and violence abound. We pray particularly for Sudan, for the unrest there, for the escalation of violence, for a part of the world that seems to be in regular cycles of conflict. We pray particularly for 
the Ukraine. Again, we pray for peace. And we pray for Taiwan and the areas in the South China Sea where conflict um, begins to escalate as well. And those are the places that we haven't mentioned this morning. We ask that you bring your peace, that you turn us around, you turn our leaders around so that peace reigns rather than power for gain. And so we sign peace. We pause now to think of those that we know, our loved ones, those are part of our community and those on the fringes of it who struggle with their health. I pray particularly for Richard. Um, thank you for um, yeah, the, the, the recovery that he has made, but pray that for him and for Diane and the girls that that recovery continues. And just quietly now bring to mind those people that um, need your healing. <clears throat> and we pray particularly for those that work to bring health to others, those that work in the National Health Service, those that provide social care. We thank you that we are able to live in a a nation where there is um, support, that that support is there and there is expertise. But we pray and we know that that support is stretched right now. And so we ask that not only do you bring health to those that are struggling right now, but that, um, yeah, the National Health Service gets the resources and support that it needs in order to support the people of this nation as well as it can with our health needs. And so we sign health or heal. And then finally, our world is not one of justice. People are not treated equally with inherent dignity and infinite worth. There are many divisions in our world. Divisions on the grounds of personal Attributes, whether that's the color of skin, sexuality, gender, or whether it's to do with their status in society, their class or their um, wealth. We know that we are created equally in your image, that each one of us deserves to live life and life in all its fullness. So we ask that you bring justice. And as we pray this, we pray particularly for those that have been forced to flee their homes. We pray for our society and our nation that we might be people that offer a generous welcome. And we pray too for those that are struggling financially right now. Not just in our own nation, but across the world for all those gripped in poverty. May you bring your justice. May you bring your freedom. And so we sign together equality. Risen Lord, like those disciples of old, we think, thank you for inviting us to partner with you in the creation of your kingdom. We thank you for your unfailing love and faithfulness. And we ask that your kingdom come soon and your will is done here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. One last song.
Desmond Tutu to ring in our ears as we leave this morning. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through him who loved us. Amen. There is tea and coffee downstairs. And after the service, come and join us and have a chat.